Now if we turn our attention to the United States, uh, clearly the U.S. embargo uh, remains very much in force. Uh, and the ability of uh, average Americans to travel to Cuba is extremely limited, although there are, there are several thousand embargo busters that go down via third countries in the Caribbean or perhaps Mexico or Canada. Uh, and the trade between the United States and Cuba is extremely limited. However, a few years ago, U.S. agribusiness got into the game and lobbied for a little amendment in Congress that allows all cash one-way food sales from American food companies to Cuba. Um, over the last five years, more than $2.5 billion of trade has taken place between the United States and Cuba. And in 2007, the United States was Cuba's fifth largest trading partner. Now, uh, this comes to a surprise to many people uh, who think we don't trade with Cuba at all. And this has actually suited the food companies quite nicely, uh, as uh, they don't have to face any competition from Cu for, with Cuban product, as the Cubans aren't allowed to sell to us. Um, and they receive all cash uh, for, their, for their goods. U.S. policy towards Cuba more broadly has basically been uh, predicated on this notion of a poof moment, that at one date in the future, the Castro government will go poof, vanish in a cloud of smoke. And at that time, a, de a pro-market democracy that wants friendly relations with the United States will take its place. Well, that is plan A, basically, for the United States, waiting for the poof. Uh, and at this point, it seems like we may want to start planning for Plan B, which is relating to some sort of gradual communist succession process in Cuba, as that is, in fact, what appears to be taking place on the island.